Welcome to settings. Here's where we'll start to dig into the details of what mTrigger can do. In this video, you'll see an example of electrode placement on the left forearm as we would target it for a wrist extension exercise, which is how we'll be demonstrating some basic features. We'll also be adding some resistance with a the TheraBand flex bar to increase our EMG signal. Remember that any resistance, weight, or load increases will also increase your EMG output. So make sure to keep that in mind when setting your goal for a particular exercise. We'll start at the top and work our way down. The first thing you'll see is a button for Launch MVC Channel 1 Setup. This is a 30 second protocol to help you identify where a patient's goal should be based on three maximal contractions. You can also perform this test manually by estimating the contraction level in train, as you'll see later on, or you can utilize this automatic setup to help you identify the proper goal setting. MVC stands for Maximum Voluntary Contraction. It's the powerhouse of biofeedback. Our entire goal with providing feedback is to encourage maximum voluntary contraction as early and as often as possible during rehabilitation in order to encourage active use of the neuromuscular pathway. This re-educates and strengthens muscles using the body's own electrical system. By identifying the Maximum Voluntary Contraction, or MVC, we enable patients to understand their performance and hold themselves to a high standard of work on every rep. Objective measurement of neuromuscular activation also helps to clearly demonstrate progress. Tap into this protocol and select Recovery Phase and Involved Side. These settings determine the display of the MVC setup test. Recovery Phase is relative to the patient's rehab program as a whole. So if they are recently out of surgery, up to a few weeks or so, select early. Mid can be used for the majority of a rehab program, and late is appropriate for patients who are approaching symmetry and full return to function. We'll use mid here. Next, make sure that your electrodes are on the muscle you'd like to measure. Recall that ours are on the left forearm, and that the electrodes are plugged into channel 1, which is marked on the M-trigger unit. Then select whether channel 1 is on the left or right side of the body. We'll keep our selection as left. Hit launch. Once in the test screen, hit the play button to begin the protocol. It will start on a relaxed period, as will all M-trigger time automated sessions. Instruct the patient to contract maximally in their exercise. Remember that increasing resistance, weight, or load increases EMG activity so the exercise and resistance used to set the goal should be the primary exercise you'll be monitoring. You can always adjust the goal manually at a later time to accommodate any changes. Once complete, you'll see the results screen. Select whether you'd like to set the goal at 100% of the MVC achieved during the test, 75%, or a custom goal. You can also type in your custom goal here then save and return to settings. Next in settings, you'll see a toggle switch for single or dual channel. We've started in single channel mode for demonstration purposes, but dual channel allows for a wide variety of treatment options, including bilateral assessment, co-contraction, and activation ratio monitoring. For more information on those options, check out our blog and forthcoming advanced applications database. If only working with one muscle or muscle group, it is important to select single channel mode to eliminate distracting activity on channel 2. Match goals allows you to sync your goals together across channels, defaulting to the channel 1 goal. You'll see that with match goal on, the goals move together using the slider. If off, they can be independently moved of one another. Match goals should be on if you are comparing to the involved muscle's healthy contralateral counterpart in dual channel mode or completing the neuromuscular deficit test. To name a couple of basic scenarios in which you might use independent goals, you may wish to train against different levels of maximum activation in co-contractors or train activation on one channel while training inhibition or relaxation on the other. If you've gone through the MVC setup protocol, you'll see that your goal for both channels has been set based on those results. You can always modify goal here by sliding the navigator button or typing directly in the UV box.
Below this, you'll find time settings. While our train mode works in real time without utilizing these time settings, in order to automatically cue patients to contract and relax and to record your session output, you'll need to get these settings how you want them. Simply decide the total amount of time you'd like to monitor and the contraction period length and relaxation period length for each rep by typing in the input boxes. This is completely customizable based on your existing programs and can be adjusted to increase difficulty as patients progress through their programs. You can also use train in the freeform mode to get real-time feedback without timing cues. Next is the audio toggle. Turn to on to play cueing tones for relax and contract periods, as well as hear a success tone when channel one reaches the green zone. Note that the success tone will sound even if you haven't begun a timed session, so that the audio feature can be used in the freeform train mode as well as in time automated sessions. Finally, we've got some background settings. The EMG monitor helps identify signal fluctuations more acutely, meaning that it can sometimes be a good place for patients with very low activity levels to look at their real-time performance. It also helps us to troubleshoot signal issues. Note though that it does not offer timing cues or recording as train mode does. You can also access your Bluetooth list from the Adjust Bluetooth Settings button. The build number at the bottom of settings helps ensure you have the most up-to-date version of the app and will change with each released update. When we make changes to our settings, we'll want to tap the Save button in the upper right before leaving the screen. In fact, if any changes are made, the app will make sure you don't leave without saving them. In this version of the app, you can only save universal settings, meaning that specific settings cannot be applied to a specific patient profile, but rather will remain the same for all usage of the app on that mobile device until changed. For this reason, it is important to make a record of settings per patient if they are using a communal device, say a tablet belonging to the clinic, as opposed to a personal device. And that's it. This simple list of settings, goal, time, and audio, enables you to customize your training sessions for each patient and utilize mTrigger with a wide variety of pathologies to get the most value out of every rep. Now tap the back button at the upper left to go to the home screen and take it to train to really get moving.